Hey, 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 speak easy podcast listeners. So hear me out. I, for a long time, did not like medication. Still don't. And so I chose alternative ways to be able to take care of the things that we would normally just go ahead and kind of pop a pill. Uh, that has passed down to my children, <laughs> for sure. But also, um, I know where it comes from. So I, I, I haven't shared this with you guys, um, but this is taking you a little deeper into who I am. Uh, but I remember in 2011 when my mother got sick, uh, well, no, this is when she passed. Uh, but before that, two years prior, she got sick and uh, was in and out of hospital. She was in a nursing home and she was only in her 40s. And the worst experience that I ever had was going to a doctor and a nurse and simply handing them a bag of medications and not knowing what was in it. And... I felt so bad that literally after we left the hospital, my aunt and I went and we looked up what the different medications were. And it was the weirdest experience because some of the medications were, were for the side effects of some of the other medications. And it was just like this whole rabbit hole that I went down. And so that's why I'm excited about this discussion for today because while it may not be everybody's ideal choice to be able to do other options, there are other options. And that's why I'm so excited to talk to Dr. Thomas. Hello, Dr. Thomas, how are you? I am doing amazing. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I am doing great. I am excited about this conversation. If you couldn't tell, <laughs> because of my personal experience, I have been very excited about this. But before we jump into this topic, um, tell the studio audience a little bit about yourself. Oh, I would love you. I would love that so much. I'm a medical doctor and I'm not like your average doctor. So what Altavis just described is not the way I doctor. I am a medical doctor, classically trained, but I believe in holistic remedies in prevention over prescription. So right now the top 10 leading causes of death seven or eight of them are almost entirely preventable. And most medical doctors never get down to the root of these illnesses and they just throw a prescription at you. So I'm not like that. I can prescribe a medication. I got my medical doctorate degree. I've prescribed many over the years, but I try to limit those to what's absolutely necessary. And the reason that I got into this, let me just give you a, a quick example. So when I was growing up, my grandfather had really bad diabetes. So he had type 1 diabetes. That's the kind that you get as a young person where your pancreas stops working. You can't make insulin. You got to take insulin. So one day we we're sitting on the porch and I was about seven or eight years old and I saw him prick his finger out and he made it bleed and he had to check his blood sugar. And I said, holy crap, grandpa, why are you sticking yourself with that needle? And he goes, Tommy, I want to see you grow up. I want to see you live your life. I don't want to die young. That's why I'm doing this. Fast forward a bunch of years, even though he had this bad type of diabetes, he lived until he was nearly 95 years old because he, for the most part, avoided doctors. He got what he needed, but he took supplements. He was healthy. He ate well. He ate real food, tried to avoid the stuff that came in bags and boxes and things with barcodes. He tried to eat the food that has one ingredient. But my other good friend who also had type 1 diabetes, he was the type of guy that just wasn't gonna have that. He just wanted to take a pill for everything. He didn't wanna be bothered, he was busy. And he was a really great guy. He was my scout leader as a kid. He would pick me up in the mornings, we'd go play basketball at 5 a.m. He was full of life. However, because he didn't really wanna do the work and didn't wanna eat healthy, didn't wanna exercise, at least in the way that, he, he just wanted to take a pill. He wanted the quick fix for everything. Sadly, even though he had the similar type of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, he died in his 40s. And he died with all of the complications you hear about. He got amputations. He was on dialysis. And it was very, very sad for me because he was a close friend. But also, he left three young boys behind with his young wife. 
And I looked at these two people and I thought, gosh, something's got to something's got to be tweaked or changed in our healthcare system. Most doctors just throw at you prescriptions, many prescriptions. In fact, prescription, like you said, on top of prescription to treat side effects of other medications to the point where you have just so many medications, you can't sort out which ones you really need and which ones you don't. And in fact, depending on what source you read, it may be the third leading cause of death in this country, which is errors with respect to medication, medical procedures, you know, medical misadventures, if you will, are a leading cause of death in this country. Nobody wants to talk about it. But guess what? That is also preventable. So I love to talk about this, how to empower yourself, how to be able to change your overall view of your health in your life, because I have learned how to teach people to be healthy, to get vital, to get more energy, to feel good. And most of it is without any medication at all. I love it. So this is why this is so such a powerful conversation. So I know for me personally, I know I have not always been the healthiest. Yes, I have chosen healthier options in some aspects. Um, I'm a pescatarian. Um, so I've chosen some healthier options. Not always, though, because just because you're a vegan, <laughs> a vegetarian or a pescatarian does not mean that you're always eating healthy. I want to go ahead and push that myth to the side because... French fries are not healthy. <laughs> so let's just push that to the side. But I did um, a lot of things uh, like essential oils. Um, uh, instead of lose, using lotions, using like almond oil for my skin. Uh, there were little things that I tweaked um, where I actually saw a big difference. And even to the point where, now this one scared me because of uh, my mother, when she passed, she, she actually had childhood diabetes as well. She didn't have any amputations, but she did have an eye removed. Uh, but she ultimately had breast cancer, but she was already in the nursing home and it was so much going on. And so I found a lump under my arm and I spazzed out. I was calm on the outside, but on the inside, I wasn't. And I uh, went to my doctor. We found out it was just a swollen lymph node. Lymph node but she said, um, stop using deodorant. And I was like, but I don't want to smell. <laughs> I don't want to offend people. But like, and, and we're talking about this Speakeasy podcast, which is because when we talk about healthier options, we're talking about all around supplements, essential oils, like there are so many different aspects to this conversation. And so for me, I had to look at healthier options for deodorant. And it's like weird because <laughs> you never thought that you would be in this space but until you're in that space. But there are some healthier options out there. So with that being said, if someone is saying, okay, well, where I am right now, I kind of sort of think I'm healthy, but maybe not. How do they test where they are in this exact moment? That's a great question. And um, just funny, I got I to follow up to your deodorant thing. So my grandpa is as healthy as he was. He never used deodorant. He was ahead of his time. He used baking soda. So baking soda is a safe way to deodorize and that wow. has nothing bad for you, right? And there's nowadays we live in a place where there's many more options. So I, I can find deodorant that doesn't have aluminum, that doesn't have harsh chemicals, but you got to look for it. But back to that, how do you know if you're healthy? Here's what I would say. Do you wake up in the morning full of energy, full of life with nothing that slows you down? In other words, do you wake up feeling good? Your body feels good. It's, it can perform what you want your body to be able to do, whether that's go for a walk or be able to pick up your kids or maybe it's go play ball with your grandkids. Whatever that thing is, if, if your body doesn't slow you down, then you're healthy. If you wake up with aches and pains and it hurts to get out of bed or it hurts to go walk around your block or you can't go up the flight of stairs in your house, whatever mm -hmm. the cause may be, then you're not really having the health that you desire. My guess is you want to not only just survive for the time being, you want to be thriving. You want to be alive. You want to have the energy that you deserve, that your body wants to do the things that you want to do. You don't want to be a burden on anybody else. You want to be able to take care of yourself and to help take care of your kids or your grandkids or your friends or your dog or your pet, whatever. You want to have the energy appropriate for that. So if you wake up in the morning 
and you feel like your health is holding you back, then I would say we can we can change that. There's lots that can be done. There's really simple things. And for that reason, I wrote a book called Preventable, Five Powerful Practices to Not Only Avoid Disease, but Build Unshakable Health. So there's five simple things that you can do on the daily that basically don't cost anything. And if we have time, we can talk about a couple of them. But they're simple, they're easy, they'll give you energy, they'll help you thrive in this life, not just simply survive your day. That's so important because even when we think about a lot of the diseases that we hear right now, a lot of them are preventable. And that is not a discussion that we're really having um, for a couple of reasons. For one, we've always been taught to trust the professionals. While that is true, you also have to learn to trust your body. Yes. And the reason why this is so important is as entrepreneurs, we can tend to kind of push things under the rug. We got a chest pain. We just push it to the side. There's some shortness of breath. We just kind of push it to the side. Oh, it's just because I'm a little overweight. Oh, it's just because it's hot outside. It's and the reality is that we ignore a lot of symptoms because we said, oh, well, we're too busy. It's just this. And so I, I love that that's the title of the book is preventable because yes, there are so many things that are preventable. We never know to what extent until we go ahead and step into it. So, okay. So you're going to have to give us at least one of those steps. So we okay. can get into the groove of this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. probably the easiest one that I think the, will move the needle the most in everybody's life is treating your food as the best possible medicine you could put in your body. Or if you don't, you could food could be a slow poison. But you know what the cool thing is? We get to pick, we get to pick each and every day, multiple times a day, what we're going to put into our body. Because fuel, food is powerful, food is fuel, food is information, food will tell your body how to do the things. It'll give you energy or it'll zap energy. And those choices actually are really, really simple. So I would just love to share a quick thing for you. In my humble opinion, I love to teach people how to add new things to their diet, new healthy things, things that they may have never tried before. Go to a farmer's market this week, today, tomorrow, the next day, and pick out some vegetable or fruit that you've never tried before. Look up online uh, recipe, how to make it, and just add one thing. I'm going to make it super easy. One thing a week to your diet. One thing that doesn't have a label, doesn't have a barcode, doesn't have an ingredients list because it's just one thing. It's a vegetable. It's a fruit. It's maybe Maybe it's something that that you got from a friend who knows how to ferment uh, vegetables and make pickled vegetables or kimchi or sauerkraut or some kind of pickled thing. There's like, did you know there's about 3000 types of fermented foods that you can try throughout this world? What's sad is there are thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of edible vegetables, fruits and other uh, items in our lives. And we eat three things in over 60% of our day, three things. We eat corn, we eat wheat, and we eat soy and rice. So four things, really, that, that actually makes up 70% of all of our diet are four things, corn, soy, wheat, and rice. And yet there's literally tens of thousands of things that we could be eating. So start with this, start with real food first. If it doesn't have a label, it doesn't have an ingredients list, and you can recognize that it's a vegetable or a fruit, or maybe you can't recognize it because you've never eaten that type of vegetable or fruit, buy something new this week and try it in your food. So there's, I love to give people that idea that they can add so many things to their diet. People always are told, don't eat this, don't eat that, take this out of your diet. I don't like to be the no guy. I like to be the yes guy, but there are only three things. It's really this simple, three things to keep in mind to try to avoid in your diet. There's really only three. So number one is highly processed grains. So the grains and flours, whether it be gluten, wheat, whatever, highly processed ones that generally come in a bag or in a box or the barcode, those are the three Bs I tell people to avoid. Those are number one. Second is the highly processed sugars. Think about anything that has on the label, sugar, 
high fructose corn syrup, rice bran sugar, any kind of thing that's sugar, cane sugar, I don't care what kind of sugar it is. If you avoid the highly processed sugars, you're gonna be so much healthier, happier, and full of energy. The sugars will actually zap your energy. You might have energy for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, but then you're gonna have a, a low where you're like, oh, I need to reach for something else because your blood sugar drops. That's natural when you eat things that have sugar. So avoid the highly processed grains, avoid the highly processed sugars, especially high fructose corn syrup. And number three, you got to avoid all of the fake oils out there, like vegetable oil. Anything that says vegetable oil, trust me, that, that stuff is not from a vegetable. It's from a seed. It's from canola. It's from soy. It's from um, safflower, sunflower, rice bran oil. All of these oils are no good for you. The reason that they're no good is because they are super inflammatory. They literally cause a fire in your body to burn and cause your joints to ache and your mind to be foggy and to not be sharp because they cause inflammation. These are what are called the seed oils. So basically almost everything, just look at the packages today of the next thing that you get at the store, whether it be even a salad dressing, if it has canola oil or soybean oil, throw it away. The only kind of oils we should be eating are the kinds of oils we were using for thousands and thousands of years, like olive oil. What do they have to do to make an olive oil? They take the fruit and they just squeeze it. They press it. Avocado oil, same thing. It's an oily fruit. You just squeeze it and press it. You make the oil. Coconut, that's the same thing. You press it and squeeze it and you make the oil. So there's three good oils out there, olive oil, avocado oil, and coconut oil. All of the others that say, quote unquote, vegetable oil, they're no good for you. So that's only three things you really have to focus on avoiding. And if you're like Altavis and you're like me and you like to have French fries once, once in a while, that's okay, but try to get them made in an air fryer, for example. They don't add these crazy oils to it. Or, or make your own and use coconut oil. I actually, I know it sounds crazy. It sounds a little weird to fry things in coconut oil. It doesn't leave much of a coconut taste at all. I think it's the best thing ever. Try to start substituting in recipes either coconut oil or avocado oil for almost any other oil that it calls for because most of these oils are no good for your body. So if you can avoid those three things, you'll be so golden that the, the bonus round, if you want a bonus round item, watch the timing of your food. So in other words, right now in the US today, unfortunately, most of us are eating every hour that we are awake. And this is not good for our body. Our body needs a rest from eating. Maybe you've heard of this beautiful thing called autophagy, which is when the body repairs itself, it rejuvenates, it refreshes, it dumps out the cells that aren't working, it recycles, it renews the body. This happens when you're not eating. So I have a quick rule that three hours before bed is when you should stop your eating, okay? You shouldn't eat right up until the moment that you go to bed. If you can stop two to three hours before bed, you're gonna be so golden. You add eight hours to that because hopefully you sleep around eight hours. You've already got 11 hours under your belt. And if you wake up first thing in the morning, just drink a tall glass of water, maybe 16 to 20 ounces of water and delay eating any food for one hour, you've already had a 12 hour overnight, what I call circadian fast, and that will help your body renew, refresh, rejuvenate. And then if you slowly want to lengthen that a little bit more, a few days a week, go for it. You will feel so much more clear and sharp and energized. I know it sounds super weird. Like how could you be energized when you're not eating? Just try it. Trust me. It may take a few days to adjust to it, but those two things, eating the real food, avoiding the stuff that has the processed sugars, grains, flours, and the seed oils, and then watching the timing of your food, that can make all of the difference in your life, your energy, your vitality. And it also simplifies things because if you wake up in the morning and you don't have to think about what you're going to eat right away, you can think about how you're going to crush your day. You get your to-do list ready. Maybe you go for a walk. You do a quick bout of exercise. You do something that invigorates you because food will often slow you down and get you tired. Have you ever had a big Thanksgiving meal and you wonder why you're so darn tired? <laughs> Well, that's the, that's the thing. You don't want to do that first thing in the morning. You don't want to have a giant meal. You want to get up and get a glass of water, maybe go for a walk, get some sun hitting your eyes. So it's the simple thing. So that's the first step in the book is pay attention to your food because it can be the very best medicine ever, or it can be a slow poison. And you get to pick that each and every day. And remember to add much more than you subtract from your diet. You only really have to subtract those three things. Keep it simple. It's funny because I am someone that I just, uh, more so now, um, I, I like trying new things, but something that I did while my kids were in high school 
because every Wednesday was Wacky Wednesday. And we would try different foods from different restaurants in the area. And we, they, you know, got a taste of, you know, different cultures and started liking different things. But it, that's been me, you know, trying something new. And one of the things that I found, especially during the pandemic, was if you look at a lot of the tea boxes, like I love tea. I am a teaaholic. <laughs> a lot of the tea boxes, they already have sugar in them. And that hurt my heart so much because I was like, but I'm putting sugar in it. So what is what are we doing here? And it was funny because just this week, um, I had um, some new tea come in. And when I looked at the ingredients, I was like, oh, it's, it's just that. There's nothing else in there. <laughs> So it's the yerba meat uh, tea. And so that is what came in. And it's like four different flavors, but literally on the side, guys, Speakeasy Podcast listeners, it says ingredients, 100% roasted yerba meat. That's all that's in it. That's all that's in it. That's it. Um, and I, I've gone ahead and started like, you know, again, it you have to kind of test some things out and try some things out. So I've tried, you know, dandelion root tea and some other things. But I, I'm a snacker. So speakeasy podcast listeners, listen, I will grab a bag of chips or something. But I've over time, especially with intermittent fasting, I've my palate has changed. And so I may grab some chips, but I'm not going to eat a whole bag of chips. Because I could eat a whole family size <laughs> at one point, but I'm not going to eat a whole bag of chips, but I still can have those snacks. So I love that you you said that because it's a process over time that we can go ahead and kind of take some, some baby steps sometimes. For some people, it's a whole big jump. But then, like I said, I've tested out intermittent fasting and that has become, like it's spiked recently like majorly during the pandemic because so many people gained that pandemic 19 um, and they were trying to find uh, different ways for them to kind of drop the weight. So with knowing and with you talking about, you know, the fact that when we are sleeping, that is part of that fasting. Can you go in a little bit more into the benefits uh, that the fasting actually has for our bodies? Oh my gosh, the benefits are astounding. So not only do you immediately have benefits, this is what I love because it reminds you every time you do it, you get more focus, more mental clarity. You actually get more energy when you do this fasting, especially as you start to get used to it. And you're doing like Alta Vista is doing maybe instead of when you wake up waiting one hour before you eat, maybe you'll wait two hours or maybe three and you can drink your tea because that tea that she's got there one ingredient, that's my favorite kind of food, one ingredient foods, there's no added sugar, you, you don't add sugar to it, you just drink it just like it is, water is always perfectly fine during your fast, and so you'll get more energy immediately and more focus and clarity, that's what I love, but in your body, there's so much magic happening, your body is actually repairing itself, it's breaking down uh, the cells that aren't working, in fact, all of us, even now, today, have cancer cells living in our body, but if our body has this chance to fast every day, it'll kill off those, those cancer cells and get rid of them. Your body knows how to clean that up. Your body is super smart. It has a native intelligence much more than we give it credit. Your body can actually rid itself of cancer, um, especially on, on the daily. If you don't even know you have cancer, all of us have, have a small amount of cancerous cells in our body any given day. And what will happen is that this fasting will allow your body to be able to cleanse itself, to heal itself, to repair itself, to rejuvenate itself. This is this magical process called autophagy, which only really happens when we're not eating. The other cool thing that you'll notice right away is what Altavis was referring to is the potential weight loss benefit. So if you want to burn fat, you want to get rid of some extra around the middle that you developed the, the pandemic 19 or the pandemic 20, um, that, that a lot of us have, have had over the last couple of years, if you do this intermittent fasting and you prolong these periods, your body can actually use that fat for fuel. But if you eat every few hours, like kind of like I was taught in medical school, you got to eat every two to three hours so you never get hungry. And, and what has that done? It's made us as a country and a world 
literally the most overweight that we ever have been in the history of mankind, the history of humans on this earth. Right now, today, 2022, we're the most overweight we've ever become because we've, we've listened to the wrong people. We're eating every two to three hours. Our ancestors ate maybe once or twice a day, maybe, maybe three times if they had a hunt and they got some great uh, harvest or maybe they found some berries or tubers. They weren't waking up in the morning and going to the refrigerator. They didn't have a refrigerator. They didn't have a pantry. They didn't have a convenience store. So our bodies were built to fast. They know how to do this. And just take it easy. Take it one step at a time. Maybe the first day, just wait 30 minutes after you get up to have a little something to eat. If you normally eat when you first get out of bed, then you can wait 30 minutes. Maybe the next day you can wait 40 minutes and the next day 50. And pretty soon you're waiting an hour when you get out of bed. And then maybe the next day you're up to an hour and 10 minutes. And pretty soon maybe you haven't eaten for two or three hours. And not only will you see those immediate benefits where you have energy, you have mental focus, you have clarity and you're feeling good, but your body is refreshing, rejuvenating, renewing itself and getting rid of inflammation, getting rid of potential cancerous cells. There's literally a list of a hundred things that are good that happen when you fast. And it decreases your rate of almost every chronic disease when you have these periods of fasting. And, and the other thing you said about snacking, I love that you mentioned that. If you get hungry throughout the day, it's okay to snack. You heard it from a doctor today. It's okay to snack, but try if you can to eat something that's a whole food. Grab a handful of almonds. Or I'm from Hawaii. I love macadamia nuts. I grab two or three or maybe five at macadamia nuts. They give me energy for a couple hours. Those things are so satiating and they're natural. They're whole. There's one ingredient, macadamia nuts. I might add a little salt to it and I can be fueled for several more hours. Or if you love fruit, grab a handful of strawberries or raspberries or blueberries. That's a low glycemic index fruit. If you're grabbing these kinds of things as a snack throughout the day, your body will not only be able to function better, more smoothly and have less inflammation, but you can have that little bit of energy that you need. What you don't want to reach for is the stuff that I mentioned at the beginning that has those three things in it, the highly processed grains and the sugars and the oils. And if you do want to have like, I'm, I'm a real guy. I have six kids. I have birthday cake at least six or eight times a year. You better believe it. When we have a birthday, I am eating that cake. What I'm not doing, I may not be going for seconds or thirds, but I'm eating a slice of cake and I'm having some ice cream too. But we just don't need to do this every single day. It's fine to treat yourself and to enjoy. I'm all about enjoying life. You want to live your life. You want to eat wonderful food and just focus on those simple things. Make sure most of the time I use the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time I eat a really awesome, healthy diet. And then maybe 20% of the time I'm going to go out with my family and eat at some restaurant that I know maybe isn't ideal, but hey, I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to live my life and I'm going to enjoy my family. I'm enjoying my friends. So you don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. You don't even, don't even worry about that. Enjoy it. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Food is meant to be enjoyed. I love food. Anybody will tell you that knows me. I'm a great eater and I'll eat everything. I eat the whole rainbow. I love, love, love. I'll try anything and I love food. But just the majority of the time, 80%, you know, more or less try to try to eat real food, try to do healthy snacks, try to do the intermittent fasting that Altavis is telling you about. Just start slow. Take it easy a little bit at a time. It can be done and it is so darn powerful. Oh my goodness, this episode went by so fast. Uh, definitely I'm going to have to bring you back on because again, this is a topic that I, I know all too well because of the experiences that I've had in my own life. Um, and with my mother and, you know, just again, I like, it's interesting. Cause I'm like, if I would have known then what I know now, wow, what a world of difference it would have made. And there are still so many people because we have access to this information, but everybody doesn't still understand it. And so let them know how they can reach out to you to get more information and also where they can get the book as well. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for having me. And we, we got into one of the five steps today. So I'd be happy to come back on. But thank you for having me. People can reach out to me easily on Instagram at Dr. Thomas Hemingway. And that's D-R, then my name, Thomas Hemingway, or on my website, which is just thomashemingway.com. The book is called Preventable. There is a website called The Preventable 
thebestbook.com and you can sign up to get uh, all of the latest. I'm going to be doing a book tour. We're going to be doing lots of fun stuff asso associated with its release. It's not available today, but it will be soon. The first of the year, it's going to be available. And so sign up there, thepreventablebook.com to get all of the good stuff. And I would love to come back at any time to tell the viewers, listeners about these other four steps. And the thing I just want to leave everybody with is that there is hope. You're never too far on the unhealthy road. Don't listen to your doctor if they tell you, oh, it's just you're getting older. Tell them BS. There is a way to be healthy. There is a way to be vibrant and full of energy. And much of it is simple and natural. And I'd love to share more of that with you. Be your own best advocate like Alta is telling you. Listen to your body. Your body knows much better than most doctors. Most definitely. I love it. Hashtag Speak Easy podcast. This is what it's all about. Again, it's for you to be able to elevate in life and in business. And trust me, if your health is not 100%, your business will not be 100%. And we want to be able to see the business through. We want to be able to see the business grow and then also see our children benefit from the business as we move forward. So with that being said, let me know how this episode resonated with you. Leave me a review on your favorite podcasting platform. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.